Welcome to another Grey Hack video. In this video, we're checking out Nightly. Nightly is the latest version of Grey Hack, and you can find information on how to uh, access the Nightly build on the Discord, which you can find a link to in the description. Uh, we're checking out uh, some of the new features in these videos and for this video we're going to check out the sniffers and the encryption so uh, to just quickly explain what those things are um, whenever a connection is made to connect to a server or computer Mm, yeah, so, so in the previous video we set up a firewall, so we can't actually uh, connect, but uh, by using SSH like this, we, we can actually do exit. Now we are on a computer that is allowed access to this computer, so now we have access to the network. You see, I used the SSH to connect to this uh, computer, and this connection can now be intercepted by something called sniffers. So uh, imagine we had a hacker who was sitting on, uh, it could be anywhere, it could be on uh, the network I'm trying to connect from or the uh, network I'm trying to connect to. So uh, on either side, if there is a hacker sitting there with a sniffer, they can intercept the information and that we are sending to access the server. Uh, so let's simulate this. Let's exit again. And then we're just going to run a sniffer on um, uh, the computer that... Um, we're actually running the sniffer on the same computer, but it doesn't matter. Uh, let's just imagine that the heck, uh, this is a hacker on the network uh, who is trying to intercept the connection. What you would do is you would just run uh, Sniffer and then when the player tries to connect like this, the Sniffer will print the information uh, that was sent. And this includes the password. We have now stolen the SSH password for this server with the sniffer. I should probably add that. Just exit again and start a browser. Okay, I don't have my hack shop in here. That's unfortunate. There it is. Let's stay back in here. Um, in here, you can find the sniffer uh, in the hack shop. So you can either script your own sniffer or uh, buy the sniffer from the hack shop. Uh, I'm just going to show both. Perfect. Now, we will close this. And we will do sniffer. Again, it's listening for data. And again, we SSH. And uh, just like our tool, the sniffer from the hack shop captured the um, uh, password. What the sniffer also can do is it can grab the source code for the encryption. Um, the encry um, encoding part of the encryption. Um, so keep the sniffer in mind. We're going to use that later in the video to show how um, it can be used to crack encryption. But before we get that far we are going to set up the encryption. So imagine that Sniffer is the attacking tool and encryption is the defense against the uh, attacking tool. What you do is you 
go into the uh, network you want or server you want to protect for example um, this computer right here that we have now um, captured the password for we would like to protect this password so that a hacker will have uh, a more difficult time um, hacking the uh, server by stealing the password and we do that by opening a file explorer or that's one way of doing it and then you have a in uh, the main folder you have a server folder inside of here you have a enco encode.stores and a decode.bin the encode stores uh, contains the script that is run to um, encrypt your password and the decode.bin contains the source code that is used to decode it again and if you use these then the password will be stuffed into the encode source and some scrambled mess will be outputted into the uh, sniffer and then the scrambled mess will be put into the, the code and the, the decode if the scrambled mess is correct will output the uh, correct password and you will be connecting to the server in order for us to even try this we need to open the config folder and in here we have an sshd config uh, file and here you can set which path you want um, to use for the encode source and which path you want to use for the decode binary but the important part here, we will use the default path, is that you need to set the encryption to true. This will enable the encryption and the um, password will no longer be displayed in plain text by the sniffer. So we will save that. Now, if we run the sniffer again, and we exit the server and we run the server uh, the SSH again it did not output our password instead it uh, outputted a scrambled mess of our password and this is the password encrypted format but since the encryption uh, was then put or the encrypted password was then put into the decode binary the correct password was still sent to the server and we were able to log in but the hacker will now have to crack this um, encrypted password um, uh, yeah the encrypted password now the default encryption on the server is not very strong you can find if you go into help in the manual in uh, ssh you can actually see the default encode source and decode source you can also copy them and this can be helpful if you want to play around with the default encryption um, we will not attempt anything more advanced in this video so what we will do is we will open the file explorer again and we will open the encode source and I will just quickly explain the structure what you have is a encode function which uh, gives uh, the password variable to the function right here and then what happens is uh, it takes the password and scrambled it scrambles it according to this algorithm and then outputs um, whatever the algorithm turned the password into uh, similarly okay, I'm going to open a codex editor here 
then I'm going to open SSH again. And we're going to grab the the code. Oh, you can't. Now then, grab the info, uh, decode function. Like so. And this way we can edit the uh, encode and decode accordingly. Uh, so if we make a change to one side, then that change will also be applied to the other side. So, one thing, let me just think here, I haven't looked at this code in a while. Yeah, so, so, so one thing we could do to make this stronger is um, pass, let's see here, it takes password, yes, do something like this. We we'll grab um, that's going to be kind of insecure as well, though. Well, it's better than what we have. Uh, so this will just be a proof of concept. It's it's nothing. It's not, it's not gonna make this. I should say that this encryption or uh, cipher right here isn't very strong. So even if it was hard to mm, get the source, um, it would still be quite easy to break. Um, so in order to make it maybe very, very minutely better, this concept could potentially make it a bit better. So uh, we could grab the last uh, character of the password and use that as the number um, that the characters are uh, scrambled by. So that should work, maybe, and then we'll just do that on the other side. And in order for this to work, we will need to, ha uh, to use a number. Yeah, this could definitely be made better. I'm just making this up uh, on the spot. Um, something like that. And then what we will do, you can change the password to whatever you like. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use password root. And I'm going to change the root password from this to that plus a number. I'm going to choose the number eight like there and then enter now um i've put a digit at the end which i also um am selecting here uh, in the encryption and decryption script so, like, like i said this is a proof of concept you can uh, use 
parts of the um, password to uh, make the scrambling, um, so shall we say, worse. Uh, so this is the decode, I think. Say that. And then... This is... No, we're not going to save that. Then we save the source. And now... We can test this. So we're going to do sniffer. And we're going to exit. And then we're going to run. I think I... Go seven right. Seven. And now the shifting is different. So as you can see previously it said E Q T I no T T and so on. And now it says uh, something different. Um and uh, the strength um, with doing something like this to make the uh, default encryption a little bit better uh, is that now you would also need to figure out uh, the end number uh, because otherwise this uh, protection is very very poor even with this just just if you know what you're doing create something better than this um, it's 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 not not particularly good protection for your servers. Um, so that's how the encryption works. You create. Um, um, maybe I should show. I could show the proof of concept for the encryption. So again, you make a n code. So now there will be a little bit of um, coding in this video as well. You make the encode function. This is the um, default function that is used in the encode script. Then it takes. Uh, password and gives us the password variable that we then use in here so something we could do is we could do this is completely unscripted i'm just making some stuff up to show how it works we take the password variable and then we Okay, yeah, I, I think I have an idea now. I will just do a for loop for p in password. This will grab every character in the password and loop that by putting it into the variable p and for. And then we can just do some stuff like... Um, If, this is very very simple, just to explain the concept, if p is equal to, what do we have here, for example an a, a, then okay, maybe we do it like this actually, as is equal to password. I think it's it. I think it's dot uh, use. So now we put uh, it into a list that is called. It takes all the characters, puts that into a list, and then we can use. And then it would be better to. Okay, so, so it's going to be p in range pass minus 1. So now the for loop 
uh, is not looping the characters, it's actually looping numbers. Uh, so it's looping from 0 to the uh, number um, that is the amount of characters in the password. And then we do if as So now, now it uh, takes the, this is the list, and it selects which of the characters in the list from the numbers. So first it starts with zero, so it grabs the first number, uh, zero, uh, in the list, which is the first character from the password. And if that is, uh, and then it loops them, so then it, it takes the se second character, third character, and so on. And if that character, whichever character, essentially we're looking at first the first characters, and the second, and the third, and the fourth. And if that character is equal to A, then it's going to change that character into something else. So then we're going to do pass P. Just copy this. Pass P is equal to, uh, what shall we do? Maybe some special sign. Like this, so that that represents A. Then we can just copy this. So for other characters, like if it's uh, LL, which we have in here, we have LL in the password. Then it's gonna um, make that into a seven, maybe. And we need to we need to be careful. Okay, this is not a good method. This is just showing the concept. Um, so, if we just used it like this, it wouldn't actually work when it was trying to decipher it because it would uh, think that this seven uh, should be turned into LL uh, since LL is equal to seven in the in this. Uh, well, we shouldn't even call it an encryption, shall we? Um, let's, let's just do one more. So, if it is 7, then it turns it into a big A, for example. Or big P. Doesn't matter. Whatever. And you can... Uh, so this is like the basic idea of the, the encryption. It somehow changes the uh, input. And something that was introduced to help us do this uh, in a much more advanced way uh, is bitwise functions. I won't dedicate this video to explaining those, but um, essentially they work like this. Bitwise, uh, it takes an operator, for example AND, and then a number, then another number. Then it takes the binary of the first number, and uses the logic operator AND on it to, uh, for example, 22 in binary uh, AND uh, 22 in binary and outputs the resu result of that logic operation. Um, okay, I don't know why I'm explaining this, but let's, for example, say that we have something like this. Uh, this is a binary number, 1011. Then we have um, one zero zero one, for example. Uh, so if both are one, then it's going to output a one. If both are a zero, then it's going to output a uh, zero. If only one of them is a one and the other is zero, then it's going to output a zero. And if both are one, then it's going to output a one. That's how and works and um, uh, so it takes the binary a number so 22 is turned into a binary uh, you have a bunch of uh, ones and zeros and then it ends it together with another long string of ones and zeros and what uh, you can do is you can use different kinds of logic operators so this was and then we have things like um, uh, or uh, so, or would be um, if uh, either of them is one, 
then it outputs one so one and one is one zero and zero is zero one or uh, either of them so this one would be a one uh, and of course one one is one um, yeah there are a bunch of them uh, something that is used a lot in encryption is uh, XOR so XOR is the same as uh, OR except if uh, both are 1 then it turns that into a 0 instead so 1 1 is 0, 0 0 is 0 1 0 is 1 and 1 1 is 0 uh, and XOR is good because you can uh, use this to transfer the information back again so if you imagine that this plus this equals this you can also do this plus this equals this and uh, this plus this equals this so it, it uh, can be converted back and forth again uh, which is not something you can do with all logic operators okay enough about logic operators uh, this is a more advanced version of what we're doing in this proof of concept uh, but essentially what you're doing is you're changing um, the information in strange ways that will be hard for a hacker to decode okay so what we're doing here is we are not doing that stuff with the ones and zeros instead we're doing if it finds an a then it changes that character into this character and so on now we will save that as no we will not save that we will we will uh, we, we will save it but we won't save uh, save it as a binary we will save it as a source we save the source then we will grab source and we will open that code editor and this time we're naming it decode decode is the um, uh, function that is used to decode the password and okay maybe before we get that far a good idea is that when you're creating encryptions you can test them by uh, just typing print and the name of the function and whatever you want to put into the function for example we want to put in the password this way we can check if there are any errors in our code which there might be um, so we will have the password we will encode it and then we will print the output because the output is oh i haven't even put a return in here have i okay so we also we forgot that we need to put return and as dot join uh, since we split it, split it into a list here and uh, exchanged some of the indexes in the list, we then have to uh, join it together back into a string. And then we return that, and now the encode will be able to print the uh, changed password. We can do test, and we can run test. Okay, so there is a there is a problem in our uh, script we forgot to put pass.len so what we did was we took the uh, password list and said password list minus one which of course doesn't make any sense so what we need to do is we need to use the password list.len which is the amount of indexes in the list and then take that number because we need a, to have a number in order to make minus one and that makes it so uh, since the loop doesn't start at one if the loop has started at one then we could have done from one to password len but we are it doesn't start at one it starts at zero and the first index is always zero i've explained this in previous videos so since we start at zero you have to take minus one from the total length okay i'm all over the place with explaining stuff in this video I don't you can uh, tell me in the con comments if you like it or not okay test and as you can see it turned um, the a into the percentage sign and the 
7 into a P, but it didn't turn the L L into a 7. Ah, yes, because it takes one character at a time. Um, there's actually another way of doing this as well. Should I show that as well? So now we're taking each character, um, but maybe even easier. We could take, I'm, I'm going to show that as well. For, for now, we will just do L here, like so, then test. And now you can see that it changed the, uh, oh yeah, of course. It changed the L into 7, and then it changed the 7 into P, so this doesn't work. Uh, click fix for this Again, this is not how you would make real encryption. This is just to show you how it works Yes We can uh, do the seven first and then the P so like this it changed the L's into sevens the A into percentage sign and the uh, What was the last thing seven into a P? Uh, and it also um since we uh, used to print in here, uh, printed it all to the terminal, so we could check if everything is working correctly, which is a good way to uh, bug test the uh, scripts you made. Okay, so we grab the new version, and we'll change the name of the function. And then we will just invert these. So if it uh, finds a percentage sign, then it turns that into an A. If it finds a P, then what did it say? And it turns that into a seven. And if it finds a seven, then it turns that into an L. Again, this will have to be reversed because Otherwise, it would just first turn the P into 7, and then turn the 7 into an L. We need to do that first, and then we can do this one. Okay. Oh, I... I did mess up, didn't I? Decode. The binary. Save. And then save encode dot source one is supposed to be source file the other is supposed to be binary yeah that's something I should explain as well um, so because we I told you we were coming back to this for the sniffer um, encryption has another weakness and that is that the encode part of your uh, this is good it's good that I made these encode decode scripts because then I can explain this better um, a weakness is that uh, a hacker can gain access to the encode part of your encryption uh, I will touch on this more in a bit so now we will run the sniffer again and we will exit i think wait if i exit here i won't be able to gain, grab this maybe it hardly matters no okay let's decode it they're here Uh, so we save that over here because now we're exiting the server again wow we did lose our script that thing closed 
more than I knew. It was very annoying. Okay. So, what we actually. Okay. Yeah, this doesn't look right at all. This is the wrong script. Something definitely got messed up there. This was not what we made. Um, so this gives us a perfect opportunity to show the other method I was going to show. Which is essentially the same thing, but just slightly different. So, password dot replace. And I'm going to do the same thing. But I'm going to do it with replace instead. So... I'm going to do replace and then I'm going to do what did we have like a like this then you can just string them together like this so l equal to x and D equal to five. There we go. So this is another way to just show how the 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 other version I showed had like a for loop and lists and stuff. So maybe that's uh, this is maybe a better way of showing what we're doing. It's a bit simpler. So it takes the password string. Then it just uh, replaces different characters in that string. So if it finds an A in the string, then every A is replaced with this. Oh yes, we can do this here as well. So if it finds LL in the string, then it replaces that with an X and so on. And then we can just save that as the source. And then we can just Get another code editor, copy this, put that in here, and the code. And now we have to reverse it, so if it finds percentage, then it turns that into an A. If it finds an X, then it turns that into LL. If it finds a 5, it turns that into a D. Like that. it as the binary and this time we're not going to exit instead we're going to open yet another terminal and ssh root and this time we're going to get the password correct so yeah that's not it SSH root A and the password. Output is unknown in this context, so we actually made a error in the script. So if we had exited now we would have had to hack in again. So it's not supposed to output it's supposed to return password. Oh wait, we made another mistake. When you do replace like this, it changes the string of the password, but we forgot to save it. Uh, then we have to save it into a variable again and if we want to replace this in the string then we will have to save that into the same variable again so we just save that like that save that one of them you save with the disk and the other one you build as a binary Mm. 
now we can test it again and as you can see it works Now let's do it with us. Well, 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 well. Okay, so we were able to connect, I think. So now I would dare to exit. Okay, that's good. And we'll run the sniffer. Waiting for incoming data. Are we already. This one seems bugged. Why is everything bugged? There we go. This terminal is bugged. Um, as you can see now, it replaced the LL with X, percentage sign, and so on. And it also logged into the server, which means that it was able to turn the uh, characters back again and uh, our password is now uh, well th this is shows how you uh, how the password changing works so what I was going to tell you was that uh, the sniffer uh, has another mm, trick up, his, up its sleeve um, it has another weapon and that is that it can save um, steel, copy, whatever you want to call it Let's see here open a file explorer into server so in here you have the encode source which is a source file which means that players can read it but it's worse than that and uh, the sniffer can actually uh, download or copy this file so you do sniffer and then save like this and then we do the connection again it, the sniffer doesn't tell you but if you do ls on the um, server where you ran the sniffer there's now a encode.source in your uh, folder and if you run code editor encode.source we can now see the encode script that is uh, used to protect this server and if you look here then we can see that a is replaced with this ll is replaced with this and if we look at the uh, password we can see that there is a percentage sign so we understand that that's supposed to be an a two l's that's supposed to be uh, or, or sorry the other way around there is an x here is an x that means that that's supposed to be two l's here is a five and here is a five that means that this is supposed to be a d and if you change all those then you will be um, you will have the uh, real password and now the hacker would be able to um, uh, use the real password to SSH onto your server so that's the um, trick that the exploit uh, uh, or the sniffer can use I think this video is long enough so I don't think I want to go into more detail about these things but uh, I think this is a pretty in-depth overview of how uh, the sniffer and the encode decode works in uh, more general terms. I hope you guys liked the video and I'll see you in the next one.